yeah. <laughs> Let's wait until more things happen so we can get to him and explain it. All. Well, by, by Monday, I was like, oh, we got to call him. So uh, my goal was not to call you. So uh, I, no I apologize. Problem. No problem, my friend. Glad Gre- to be here, McGraw. Greg Willard is a uh, professor at St. Louis University Law School. He is also uh, our legal analyst. He's our go-to guy. And you were Gerald Ford's attorney. Um you were a White House attorney. White House staff assistant to White President House, Ford. Right. But you are, so you were attorney <laughs> inside the White House. No, became an attorney afterwards. I was on the White House staff during his presidency. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so you know all about obstruction of justice, <laughs> and you can explain it to the rest of us. Because of all the things that happened over the last 72 hours, the most interesting thing came out this morning when uh, Donald Trump's lawyers are floating this idea— that it doesn't matter if Donald Trump is deemed to have obstructed justice because it is impossible for a president to obstruct justice because he's the president. He can do anything he wants. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can divide it into a couple of of boxes, McGraw, and and we can discuss each of them separately. The first box is just a, a generic proposition. Can a sitting president be indicted for anything? Okay. Uh, and there, there are serious constitutional issues about that. We can discuss them. The second is a, a narrower box, and the one you specifically posed, and that is, can a president be found guilty of obstructing justice? And the argument goes that the president is the chief law enforcement officer. He, he is the chief prosecutor under the Constitution. And therefore... If there is an investigation going on, at its core, it is an exercise of his power under Article II of the Constitution. If he, in the process, says, you know what, I want that investigation stopped, well, as a constitutional matter, he has that power to order that investigation stopped. The question then becomes is, can it be a crime? What Mr. Dowd, Trump's lawyer this morning, suggested was that because he is the chief law enforcement officer, it's almost circular, right. and therefore it can't be a crime. Okay. Again, this is going to go. This is going to strain my brain cells. Um, and, and we should also know that if uh, something can be an impeachable offense and not be a crime. That is correct, and, and that's sort of another box we can get into. But on, the, on this box as to whether the president can be convicted of obstructing justice, uh, we need to go back in our history books to the Supreme Court case, United States v. Nixon, mm-hmm. over the tapes. If you remember McGraw, the, right. the, <clears throat> the special prosecutor, Leon Jaworski, had subpoenaed the tapes and Nixon had refused. Well, one of the arguments that Nixon put forth was that I am the chief law enforcement officer, and if I decide in the course of an investigation not to give up evidence, that's final because Mr. Jaworski is my subordinate within the Justice Department. And I think the supporters of President Trump If they took the time this morning to read footnote 8 to the U.S. v. Nixon case, Mm -hmm. uh, they would take a step back and say, ouch. Because what the Supreme Court said in U.S. v. Nixon, and President Trump is bound by it, Mm -hmm. is that the regulation under which Jaworski was serving was in effect at that time. And the Supreme Court said as long as that regulation is in effect— Jaworski has, if you will, the the royal flush. He has the upper hand because the regulation is binding on everyone, including the president. Fast forward to 2017, McGraw, we've talked about this on the air. Mm -hmm. Robert Mueller is operating pursuant to a regulation of the Justice Department. He has been given the authority of the president, in effect, under Article 2, to do this investigation. So if a special counsel under that regulation proceeds with charges against a sitting president, as long as that regulation is in effect, 
based on the logic of U.S. v. Nixon. Mm -hmm. I think the proponents of President Trump's position are going to be in jeopardy. Okay, but... The allegation, let's just for argument's sake, let's fill in some of these blanks here. Let's say the obstruction of justice was firing of Comey or destroying evidence or something uh, under the FBI investigation. Mm -hmm. Is that, can that be deemed obstruction of justice because it's not under this Mueller investigation? Well, <clears throat> then then I guess we get into uh, can can the president be indicted by Mueller for obstruction of justice. Right. So can, can Mueller do it? Mm -hmm. And then the second sort of related question is, is that underlying conduct a federal crime? So let's stay with the second question. Is the underlying conduct a federal crime? <clears throat> what, what the proponents of President Trump would say, and, and John Dowd said this morning, no. Right. Because you can't obstruct yourself. Right, uh, you, it, but it sounds. But but that's not settled. That's not settled, though. That's that's an argument, right? I mean, or is it? Well, it's not. It's not settled. Uh, it's it's never been ruled on uh, by any court uh, that I know. Certainly in the presidential context, in that uh, that a a a president uh, cannot obstruct justice because, in effect, he is the purveyor as mm -hmm. prosecutor of of that piece of the justice process. But again, I think from a uh, from a constitutional standpoint, to to get out of the weeds uh, for a moment from the talking heads, I think the practical reality goes something like this, McGraw. Mm -hmm. If if that is the path down which this goes, God forbid, uh, we've been there too many times. Uh, my guess is that uh, we're going to have an impeachment proceeding. Mm -hmm. And this that that question becomes academic at that point, right? Because that's some because again, you don't you can you can do something that's an, an, an impeachable offense, but is not criminal. Does not necessarily have to be a, a crime. It is a it is a different standard under the Constitution. I thought. Well, let me ask you this this question: um, a president. Let's let's take it out of this current administration. A president robs a bank as president of mm -hmm. the United States. Right. Can he be charged with robbing a bank and go to prison as president? I, it is unsettled law. The Federalist Papers, uh, Alexander Hamilton, the Federalist Papers, I think it's six, number 69, suggests no. It, that What they seem to suggest is that, and the, the phrase is used in the context of impeachment, after he is removed from office, and the, and the Federalist Papers used afterwards, right. it suggested that then he could be charged and convicted. But again, the Federalist Papers are not controlling law, McGraw, and I think there's a good argument that if, if a sitting president or a federal judge, mm -hmm. if a federal judge robs a bank, um, uh, he can be charged and convicted. Well, is a president... Is there, is there something in the Constitution that makes that different? There are arguments that say, well, yes, it is because of his role in the Constitution. But there are others that go back to the simple adage, no man is above the law, McGraw. Right. So uh, the, the, uh, the Supreme Court kind of waded a little bit into this swamp in the 90s. Paula Jones sued Bill Clinton. Right. Now, this was a civil matter, not a criminal. Right. But she sued him. In federal court, okay, and the United States Supreme Court ruled that the court that the president was not immune from civil suits while sitting as president. Well, the opponents of President Trump, I think, would very quickly say it doesn't take a great leap of logic to say, well, if he can be sued civilly by Paula Jones, a sitting president can be sued criminally. By a special counsel. Considering he wasn't president at the time, right? What's that? You can be sued for things that you've done before you were president? Well, that was the Paula Jones case, but I don't think, I, I, uh, I don't think there's a, a, a distinction. If, if you are sued for acts that you took when you were president, you have uh, immunity right, right. Uh, for certain things. But the, the core issue is, can a president be sued while he's in office, but these, but these allegations. Uh, let's say uh, everything he did wrong was before he was elected, or uh, excuse me, before he was sworn in. Mm -hmm. So he's a private citizen, even though he's president-elect. 
Right. Right. But the indictment would be during his presidency, and therefore this constitutional argument would come up, which would say, well, he can't be prosecuted while he's president because of the of the nature and the role of the presidency himself. And I think the opponents would say, phooey, U.S. or uh, Jones v. Clinton, if he can be sued civilly, he can be sued criminally. Uh, strap on your six shooters in the courtroom. Let's go. Uh, by the way, I just want on the record that you quoted the 69th Federalist Paper. Okay, uh, not, <laughs> not too many people on the show can quote that. I believe it's the si No, I think it was the 69th, Greg uh, Willard. Can Donald Trump, um, can Donald Trump uh, pardon Michael Flynn today if he wants to? Yes. Unquestionably, he could do that. And you and I have talked on the air. Uh, my, uh, my belief is, in addition to pardoning Michael Flynn, it's a closer question on this second topic, but I think uh, a president can self-pardon and move on. And so I think if it gets to a point where there are threats or even a charge of obstruction of justice, I think uh, any of the parties who are allegedly involved in that can be pardoned by the president, and the, I think the president can self-pardon. The other, the other piece I, I would remind our listeners, McGraw, is um, this is not this is not new. Uh, back in the spring of 1977, uh, Nixon, as former president, gave a series of interviews to David Frost. Yes. And in the course of those interviews, he famously said, in the context of obstruction of justice, was what he and Frost were talking about. Nixon said, well. When the president does it, that means that it is not illegal. Right. And everybody laughed and said, boy, what a knucklehead he is. Right. Uh, including yours truly at the time. Well, uh, fast forward 40 years, I'm not, uh, I'm not laughing quite as much as I did in the spring of 1977 because I think it's a closer question as a matter of constitutional law it, as to this, the circular uh, nature of it that we talked about a moment before, but but that's what Nixon was talking about. That that when the president does it, mm -hmm. which is the it is alleged obstruction of justice, that means it is not illegal. Right. I okay. Uh, now I know impeachment is whatever people choose it to be, and I am not insinuating or anything. Just in terms of interest, isn't or is obstruction of justice, whether one is found guilty in a court of law or not, but is it if one deems somebody to obstructed justice as a president, is that an impeachable offense? Let me answer that two ways. I think as, as a classroom question yes. or on the air, uh, it, it, the, the answer to that question is unequivocally Yes, that is an impeachable offense. It was an impeachable offense for Richard Nixon in 1974 with the House Judiciary Committee, and it was an impeachable offense that when Bill Clinton was, in fact, impeached. Yes. But we have to be very careful that 50 years from now or 50 days from now, if the question comes up, is obstruction of justice an impeachable offense? the current House of Representatives is not bound by what prior Houses of Representatives have determined to be an impeachable offense. Said another way, this House of Representatives may conclude that obstruction of justice is not an impeachable offense. The, the basis for that is another comment that was, was soundly derided at the time by then Congressman Jerry Ford. And Congressman Ford in the early 1970s, when the Congress was investigating Supreme Court Justice William Douglas for possible impeachment, Ford famously said, an impeachable offense is whatever a majority of the United States House of Representatives says it is at any point in time. Certainly understandable. Okay. One question leads to another, leads to another. Just, and, and this is, I guess, a constitutional question. In terms of the House of Representatives, I get that. They impeach. They have the articles of impeachment. They have to pass 50%, mm -hmm. right? It has to pass over 50%. Right, to impeach. A right. majority of the House has to impeach. And then it goes to the Senate. For the trial. Right, for the trial. 
And as a senator, you sit in silence, which isn't always a bad thing, <laughs> and you listen to the trial put on in front of this. We saw this during the Clinton deal, right? Presided by the United States uh, Supreme Court Chief Justice. Right. And so the question over whether or not it is an impeachable offense, here's the, this is the question, but here's my statement. The question over is obstruction of justice an impeachable offense isn't the answer the senators are asking. The, the, the question the senators are asking, and here's my question, is it not, did this man obstruct justice, right? Because it's the impeachable offense. So regardless of whether or not it is, it is or is not impeachable, is that the question for the senator? Or is the senator answering the question, did this man obstruct justice? Do you understand? I do, and it's a terrific question, and I think it, it is a corollary to then-Congressman Ford's statement about a, a congressman impeaching a president. Right. And the corollary is, is as a, I think, as a technical matter and probably as a practical matter, McGraw, it's whatever each of the 100 senators decides. Right. There may be some, as we saw with, with Senator Byrd in the Clinton impeachment, that it's not merely a question of did he obstruct justice? In Senator Byrd's mind, it, the vote to remove from office, which is what the Senate is voting on, McGraw, right. it is a vote to remove from office. And what Senator, the late Senator Byrd said was, is I have to decide, not only did he commit the underlying offense, but should he be removed right. from the presidency for that? And as a so in, in a sense, it was jury nullification by the United States Senator. Well, it's not jury nullification in the sense that each one of those 100, they have a plenary vote, McGraw, and they have the power under the Constitution to decide the basis upon which they cast that vote. And there's no, uh, there's no appellate review. There's no going across the Supreme Court. If, if Senators uh, Milhaven and Willard uh, voted a certain way, we don't have to worry that they're going to haul us across the street to the Supreme Court and say, wait a minute, fellas, right. your vote was unconstitutional. No, I understand that. But if you're sitting on a jury and you think the speed limit should be 40 and somebody got a ticket for going 20 and you say, well, that's that's a stupid law. He's innocent. That's not the question. The question right. is, did he break the law? And jury nullification, that's, yeah, they, you hit it right on the head. Jury nullification. The, the reason I think jury nullification does not apply in a, a, a trial in the Senate for removal is that, the in, in effect, uh, the, the Constitution leaves to the individual senators uh, portions of the bases upon which they are going to vote to remove. Basically, we are staring at one giant mess no matter what happens. Uh, fasten your seatbelt, my friend. It's going to be a bumpy and, I think, uh, months and months long ride. You're out of order. <laughs> this whole radio show is out of order. That is Greg Willard. He is a professor at St. Louis University Law School, and he is our go-to guy. You don't mind us calling you at the last moment because this is going to get interesting. Oh, no. Always delighted to be here, my friend. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming in. 928 here, Big 550, KT.